niggas out, I'm that new nigga. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine niggas wanna war, ten niggas on the floor, eleven niggas on the floor, twelve killers wanna war, thirteen. Killers. What's up, guys, and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be doing this door shatter effect. But first of all, I wanted to thank you guys because the channel has just reached 8,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. It's really awesome to see this channel finally growing at a consistent rate. After all the work I've put into these tutorials and the videos I've created over the past 10 years, I've, I've been on here for a while. I just haven't been doing straight up VFX until pretty recently. One more quick announcement if you have not seen my My Year 2020 video. It's a pretty cool edit and I put a decent bit of time into that. So if you have a second, please go check that out. It's not that long. It's like three and a half minutes if I'm remembering correctly. And yeah, I just appreciate all the love you guys have been showing to the channel lately. So let's get right into this door shatter transition effect. The first thing you're gonna wanna do in After Effects is create your composition. So take your clip, drag it down to this button here to create a composition from it. I'm actually gonna go into the composition settings and name this main composition and then switch the aspect ratio to 1920, 1080, just so that we can render this faster for the sake of this tutorial, because this is a 4K clip. So I'm going to decrease the scale to 50%, and we are ready to rock. I'm actually going to cut my clip real quick, because I don't want that little dead spot in the beginning. At the end, you wanna go all the way until you are fully within the door frame. And it looks like this is the last frame with the door frame visible. So I'm gonna cut my clip, drag it to the beginning of the timeline. Then I'm going to right click this clip, go to time, enable time remapping. On the first frame, I'll create a keyframe for the time remapping. And then on the last frame, I'll create a keyframe as well. Drag those in to get your sped up clip. And we end up with this. I'm actually gonna speed that up just a teeny bit. And that's the hallway clip we're gonna use. Before we get too far into this, I wanna show you guys how the shatter effect actually works. So you just take a layer. Let's use this brick wall JPEG I have. I'm gonna scale it down a bit. Go to effects and presets, search shatter. Drag that onto your layer. And then you'll get this wireframe and forces view. I always just leave it on the rendered view so I can actually see what's happening. But if you scroll through your clip, you can see that the shatter effect literally just shatters that layer into a bunch of 3D pieces. And you have the ability to determine how much force goes into this. You can make it a harder explosion, if you will. You can change the shape of the pieces that are shattering. You can do squares, triangles, but we are going to stick with bricks for obvious reasons. Additionally, you can manipulate the number of repetitions that this shatter will have, so the number of particles, basically, that will fly about. And if you increase the number of repetitions, you can decrease the size of those bricks. If you decrease the number of repetitions, you can make them really large. If you really care about making this super perfect, I'm sure you'll notice that these aren't lining up perfectly with the bricks. You have the ability to change the direction of the bricks. It's already in the correct direction though. You have the ability to shift the origin of the shatter so that you can line it up with the bricks. You just have to tweak that to get it perfectly where you want it. And that looks pretty close to me. If you wanted to line it up perfectly with all the bricks, you can get a pretty realistic shattering effect out of this basic little effect that After Effects has built into it. Additionally, if you want the bricks to be thicker, you can change the extrusion depth for real bricks that would probably look a little more realistic. That is how shatter works. Another cool shape it has is glass for the shatter. So if you have something that is like a window, for example, so let's take this window, add a shatter effect go to the rendered view. Instead of shattering like bricks, which would not look real at all, there is the option to have it shatter with a glass pattern. And that just allows you to keep your effect a little more realistic. In fact, I would actually decrease the extrusion depth if you're doing glass so that the glass looks more realistic and sharp. But yeah, this is a pretty useful effect if you want to blow something to pieces. So let's delete that layer and go back to our hallway. So first thing I want to do is actually center this a little bit because it is kind of jumping all over the place. I like leaving some of the shake in my final result because it's just a little natural camera shake, but I do want to center this a little bit. So let's create an adjustment layer above our layer. Then I'm going to add a grid effect to this adjustment layer. Switch the blending mode to normal and then adjust this corner value, just increase the X value and the Y value until all we have is this little sniper scope right in the middle. The reason I'm doing this is because in order to center this clip, 
we need to know where the center is. And if we start moving around the position, it kind of drags that center indicator for the layer with it. So in order to find the center, we create that grid adjustment layer. Now, all we're gonna do is keyframe the position and center it throughout the entire shot. As you can see, it kind of falls off place quite a bit throughout the shot, especially at the beginning. So you just gotta go through and manually do this real quick. You can do every keyframe if you want a super smooth, super centered result. But again, I like keeping some of that shake and variation within the clip. So I don't hit every single keyframe. I just go every like four or five keyframes and then recenter it. And then at the very end, you'll want to just recenter it again at 960, 540, or 1920, 1080 if you're using a 4K composition. Then just scrub through your clip and see if there are any points that are just egregiously out of place. Like here, we could center that a little more. I'll center there. Perfect. Then you can delete your grid layer. You can either use a motion tile or scale in the clip to get rid of these blank edges. So I'm just going to scale in a teeny bit, let's say 53, because this is a 4K clip, so we're not losing any quality at all in terms of pixels. Let's see if this stays within frame the entire time at that. And it does, so we're good to go. Next step, you're gonna want to duplicate your layer, figure out where you want your transition to start. Let's say we want the shatter to start on this frame. Go back one frame and then cut the beginning of your clip using Alt left bracket. The reason why we're going back one frame is because shatter starts at the beginning of your layer. No matter what you do, the shatter effect starts at the beginning of your layer. However, it does not start until the second frame. The first frame, it'll show the full object. The second frame, it starts the shatter. That's why we're moving back one frame. It's just just one of those quirks I mentioned. Then you wanna press G and then create a mask around the door. Just going to create a basic rectangle mask around our door. And then press M on your door layer. Right click, mask one, click track mask, and then track it forward. Now you are going to lose the mask during the track because it becomes too close to the frame. And when that happens, we just stop the track go back to where it lost its place. This could be a little better. And then track it manually. So here's where it got really bad. Just have to go in and manually do those keyframes. Luckily, it's only a few frames, so it's not super tedious, but you definitely have to do this part manual as you get closer to the door or the window frame, whatever it is you're shattering. There we go. So now duplicate that layer. We're gonna name the bottom one door and the top one rest of hallway. Select your top layer, press M to open up your mask and switch it to a subtract mask. So if we solo out this layer, you'll see that it is just the rest of the hallway minus the door. And if you solo out the middle layer, you'll see it's just the door. And then just bring your bottom layer back so that it's not appearing under these layers. So now we have to create our shattering door. We're going to want to freeze frame the second frame of our door. In order to do that, we need to do a little cleanup. So press U to open up all your keyframes. Make sure your playhead is on that second frame and get rid of your position keyframes, get rid of your mask path, then right click it, pre-compose. Just name this door pre-comp. We're just pre-composing it because sometimes freeze frame messes with the time remapping we already did. So now we can just freeze frame it and this layer now becomes that door from that frame. And you'll see that it's just that one frame of the door. So now all you have to do is add your shatter effect to that layer, switch it to rendered view, make the shape whatever you please, and do stars and triangles. You could leave it on bricks, you could switch it to puzzle if you want something slightly less realistic. I actually really like these herringbone presets for the door, but I'm going to adjust the direction so we don't have those horizontal lines. I want it to be all horizontal and vertical. I'm going to increase the repetition so we have more flying pieces. And then let's see how these look. Uh, the extrusion depth actually looks pretty good where it's at. I actually decreased it just a tiny bit. That looks pretty good for a door. And then we have our shatter effect. And honestly, you could work with just that. 
finished, but technically these pieces are shattering towards the camera. What if we wanted it to shatter forward? So it's like we're blasting through the door. You can actually go into camera position, switch the Y rotation to negative 180, and that will change the direction of the explosion. Now it's going into the screen. It's kind of hard to see, but if you increase the strength of the force, maybe that'll make it a little easier. I know it's kind of difficult to tell, just know that it is. But you'll notice that as soon as we switched the Y rotation to negative 180, we actually got this really dark version of the door. We just need to go down to lighting and move the light back in Z space. The parameter for that within the shatter effect is light depth, so we just decrease it in the negative direction and now the light is in the proper spot. You'll also notice that the door flipped, so the knob is now on the wrong side of the door. In order to fix that, you just have to add a flop effect to your layer. I just put this over the shatter effect and now the door is in the proper orientation. So let's go back and watch what we've got. I think the force is a little bit too high because we kind of miss a lot of the bits and pieces flying due to the door frame being in the way. So I'm actually going to decrease the strength of the force a little bit so that we can just see more of those pieces flying about. And that's how you create the base of that transition. All you have to do is add your next clip. Let's take this hallway shot I have. It's super slow, so I'm actually going to increase the speed real quick. I'm just gonna time stretch it. Let's say time stretch factor of five. Actually, let's try a time stretch of four. And that's how you get that effect. But you'll notice that these flying pieces are, are kind of staying in the frame far too long. So the way you can combat that, because again, this door that's being shattered is just that door at that one size we freeze framed. So in order to make it fit the scene a little more, we're gonna have to animate the scale a bit. So go to the beginning of your shatter and then scale it up a ton so that we lose those bits and pieces flying about by the end. And you'll notice that we lost a lot of the pieces flying around due to that scaling up. So just play around with it and figure out what looks best. You can manually go in and decrease the scale a bit at the start, just so that we can see a few more of those pieces flying about before they go out of frame. And I think that looks good. You'll want to cut that shatter layer as well, because if you don't, you'll notice that random pieces are still flying around. So just cut it wherever they're fully out of frame. And then you have your shatter transition. And again, you can do this with a window, you can do this with a brick wall, it really doesn't matter. You just switch the object, you mask out and shatter. So now for the fun part, let's add a little more motion to this to make it a little more trippy. So right click down here, create a new adjustment layer above all your other layers. I shorten that to fit my timeline. I'm actually gonna trim this comp to work area so we just have this. Add a motion tile effect to your adjustment layer. Switch the output width and output height to 200 check mirror edges, then add a transform effect to this adjustment layer. I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning of this clip for rotation. And then let's go to the end of it and add, let's just do a full 360. Now you do get these weird kaleidoscopy edges, which could be something you want. So that just allows you to make your audience a little more motion sick. And then lastly, to smooth everything out and make it look super fast and just it looks cooler this way is you'll want to add another adjustment layer with a CC radial blur effect. This is what's going to give us our motion blur. And I don't want it to have like spinny motion blur just cause it kind of just makes everything like less sharp and clear. I just want the radial blur of moving forward really fast. So switch this to fading zoom, increase the quality to 100, leave it centered because our clips are pretty much perfectly centered. And then let's up the amount to about 15. It kind of smooths out that kaleidoscopy effect and just makes it look faster. It just looks cooler this way and a lot smoother than CC force motion blur would look. If you can avoid CC force motion blur, do it because it works really well in a lot of cases. But if you want a more realistic vibe, if you can manually create that motion blur with a radial blur or direct blur it just looks a little bit better so now we have our effect 
I'm going to rename this radial blur and then I'll name this layer rotation. Lastly, like I do with all of my effects, I would suggest adding a what over top everything just to blend the colors between your two layers it'll make that transition a lot smoother and just make everything just look that much better so if we add a LUT let's go with this wave LUT I have once you have a LUT over everything the colors are just that much more blended this is something that's very overlooked in a lot of transitions I think blending colors between two shots just eases every single transition visually. It's one of those things a lot of people don't think about, but always, always blend your colors for the smoothest possible transition. Everything just blends that much more seamlessly here. And for warning, when you add your LUT, your radial blur, and your shatter effect, it gets very RAM intensive and it may cause your After Effects to crash. I have a really strong computer. I know that may not be the case for everyone, but just so you know, once you put everything together, it may cause After Effects to have some issues, so you may have to do some pre-rendering. If you just turn off your radial blur layer, do a high quality ProRes pre-render, and then go back in and add the radial blur on top, that's probably the best way to get everything put together. Just so you know, because I did have issues rendering this out, even within After Effects. I didn't even try to export it because I knew it would probably fail since it was causing issues within the software itself. At a point, blending a bunch of effects just will cause issues. Anyways, that is it for this video, guys. I think this is a really cool effect that a lot of people do not incorporate within their edits. A lot of people use the sliding door, the opening door transition, but I think this is a cool little, slightly more advanced variation of that effect. So let me know if you like this tutorial in the comments, guys. Don't forget to check out that My Year 2020 video. And don't forget to subscribe for more editing tutorials and potentially some really cool short films I plan on making in the future. Anyhow, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. the EMT. Nigga on the bomb like TNT. But I roll up on a nigga for the GMC. Get the clap and all the middle be the ENT. Call the plus, tell them that I want to lose 10 key.